here today. We got 112 people in the room right now. This is so exciting. There's so many people here that have auditioned before that did really well. And this is going to be awesome. I'm so excited everybody's here. Lots of countries too. Hello to everyone yeah. all over the world. Yeah, so you know uh, Avi, Rob, and I were the founders of Acapella Academy. Um, and we have Beth Davis with us today, who is our managing director. She does pretty much everything behind the scenes to keep this thing running year round, um, answering all the emails, doing everything, the website, uh, everything. So um, she's kind of been seeing the, the process firsthand. Um, and so she's gonna weigh in as well. Um, so yeah, should we get get going? Anything, anything, yeah. should we, maybe let's talk about just a little overview of what's happening this year. Um, so I don't know if you guys have seen the website updates, um, but we are 100% doing a digital camp this year, um, regardless of what other what else happens. And then if it is safe to have an in-person camp, we will also have an in-person camp. Um, just to repeat that, there is a digital camp for sure, and there might be, if it is safe, an in-person camp. Um, so even if you're across the world and you know that even if it is safe to have an in-person camp, you can't make it because it's too far, too expensive to travel. Um, you can do virtual camp, which is the first year that we're knowing this this early on in the game. So that's really exciting. I'm glad, I, I'm excited to see who kind of steps up and is able to join our our family who may not have otherwise. Um, now that we're doing absolutely, digital, sure. yeah. Um, and also, so, if you audition early, this is also the first year that we are giving you the option to not pay an application fee if you audition by December 15th. So auditions are open until February 1st, but sometimes it's hard to even pay an application fee and we wanted to make sure that we removed as many barriers as possible. So if you audition early, you do not need to pay that application fee if you do it by December 15th. Re, my favorite thing. <laughs> For the low, low price of nothing, you can <laughs> nothing to lose, literally. Yeah. Cool. Um, cool. We'll we'll kick it in. off. Let's do it. Dive in. Uh oh. So while Ben's loading this up, so I'm just going to say, um, so this class is obviously sort of specialized talking about our process for Acapella Academy, but I think part of it we hope is that it's going to be really broadly applicable to any audition you have anywhere, uh, particularly any video audition you have, which, I, you know, for the foreseeable future, I imagine there's going to be a lot of that. Um, so we hope whether or not you're planning to audition for Acapella Academy, which we hope you will if you're eligible, uh, we hope that this will just help you audition better, because um, we've spent a lot of our adult lives watching videos of people auditioning for things and auditioning for things ourselves. Um, and we just want to pass on some of that knowledge because frankly, when you're running auditions, you want people to do well. Um, you know, you, you want to see people really step up and, and, and have all the information and do well. So um, we hope that this class will help you both with us and with anything else that you're doing. So let's get to it. Yeah, so with that, so the first section we're going to do is just about general audition tips, not necessarily specific to ours. Um, but just general, and then we're gonna dive into our specific process um, a little later on. So first we're gonna talk about the technical side of things, just what you can do from a technical standpoint to put yourself in a good position um, to have a, a good video that is received well. Oh, it's a little bit slow. Okay, there we go. First things first, read all the instructions. Um, this is something that we see a lot. There are people that audition for us that don't necessarily catch everything. They put things out of order. What are some other things that people do that they I'm may just not- not doing some of the sections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, skipping, skipping stuff. Sections. Yeah. And then we have to like follow up with people and be like, oh, can you send us this part? Can you send us this part? And it's a, it's a hassle. Yeah, so that's the first thing is just like making sure you are fully aware of what is required of you and being really careful and not rushing through any of that process. Um, one thing we are going to ask this year, which is really useful, this is specific to us, but um, adding timestamps um, on your video so we can kind of go, go quickly to each section. So all you have to do in the description of a YouTube video is type in, you know, 328 uh, personal statement or whatever it is, and it'll automatically um, kind of find that and link it. You don't have to link it anything. You don't have to do anything yourself. Just type in the time and then it'll automatically do it which is a cool- Very helpful for us. Super very helpful, helpful and probably helpful for any other audition too with Absolutely. multiple effects. And I think we're not, we're not making this mandatory, so to speak, but we are strongly encouraging it because it makes our lives a lot easier and we really appreciate it. 
starting with the video aspect of things, um, you want to make sure you're in the good lighting. Um, so Avi is a great example of not amazing lighting right now. <laughs> He's a little blown out. Um, you know, so if you're on your iPhone, <clears throat> just putting yourself by some natural light, um, making sure I am by natural light. <laughs> yeah, but your your skin is just too radiant then. Not enough natural light or too much natural light. <laughs> you can actually on your not not on Zoom, but if you're doing if you're taking a, a video on your iPhone, you can actually pull, you can push the little thing while you're taking while you're about to take a video, pull the lighting down if it's too bright or pull it up and you can adjust that stuff um, on your phone. Uh, framing angle. So, you know, we don't want to see people looking down at a really unflattering angle. We don't want to, you know, make sure you're kind of positioning yourself and looking back at it and saying, oh, I look good. I like how I look. It's not a weird angle. It's not, you know, it, it looks nice. Um, and framing wise, you know, you want to be in the middle, um, just kind of basic stuff that you can find a lot of resources for online. Just even like how to take a video with your iPhone. It'll have all these tips. You may not, not have even thought of. It sounds obvious, but like there are things that you may not have thought of. Anything else on the video side, guys? You made fun of Avi, now he turned his video off. <laughs> uh, horizontal, shoot it horizontal, not vertical. Horizontal is always yep. good, always the way. Um, moving on to audio. For our, our audition, you know, we like to hear exactly what it sounds like. So, you know, you don't need to have a mic. If you do have a separate um, mic, you can do that. Just don't add any extra effects to it. Um, but camera audio is perfectly fine making sure that you um, are <laughs> not clipping or distorting. Um, if you're on a webcam, you're, you're more likely to do this because the iPhone and most phones have an automatic um, gain reduction. So it'll kind of automatically make sure you don't clip. Um, but if you're on a webcam and a, on a com computer, you're way more likely to do that because I don't think they have that. So going into the sound settings, making sure your microphone is turned down enough, um, just really taking the time and care to make sure you sound good. Yeah, and you'll know too. It's like if it if the if the sound is distorted, you'll know that it's clipping. Um, if you're not familiar with these terms, basically it's just like if it doesn't sound good and it sounds you know either too loud or overloaded or you're getting any kind of distortion or weird sound in your thing, um, you might want to investigate whether it was recorded um, without that re noise reduction uh, and fix that up. And then, like I said before, you know, using online resources, taking your time and really making sure you're presenting everything the best possible way and using there are tons of resources online for all this stuff. Okay, if it wants to load, there we go. Quality control, this is key. Um, you know, making sure you are testing your audio and video and not going through your whole audition and saying that was the best take ever. And then going back and seeing that you're clipping and you're distorting and the angle's weird and the lighting's weird. And you're like, oh, but it was so great. I'm just gonna use it anyway, you know? So instead of going all the way through it, take a little test, sing a little bit, sing the loudest section that you're gonna sing, um, take a little video test, look at it, make sure you like it, and then go and film the full thing. Yeah, let, let me add to at that, at that juncture. So there's no points off for editing stuff together. So if you wanna do all the sections of the audition separately and then edit them together into one video, you can do that. Sometimes people do the audition in one long take, that's also fine, um, but we don't take any points off if you wanna you know, do it one section at a time, make sure it's right. Um, we'll get to this in a little bit, but when we watch these auditions, and I think this is true of, of most auditions, especially if it's a video audition, we're assuming that you took the time to do it exactly the way that you want to do it. Um, so, you know, feel free to do it on your own terms and don't feel like you have to necessarily do it all in one shot. You can take the time to do it separately and really make it what you want it to be. We have people come, you know, they're in different outfits. They did one section one day and another, yeah. section another day. It's fine. Um, Honestly, totally different fine. backgrounds, different, yeah, it's clear yeah, it happened over the course of time, which is awesome because it means that they worked on it. You yeah, know? different acoustic spaces too. Sometimes people do like <laughs> if they if they feel more comfortable doing like the blending stuff in like a more reverberant area, like we've seen that too, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll get more into this in a second, but that's just a thought. Um, yeah, so testing, listening back, making sure once, you're, once you have filmed your audition um, that you, have listened through the whole thing and you're happy with it and you're not just kind of, oh, I did it and I'm going to send it off. You know, um, I think there are a lot of things that we listen to that we're like, did they really listen all the way through this? Because there are some just like really easily fixable mistakes that we know they can do better, but they just didn't quite take the time to really listen 
and check their work and make sure they were presenting the best possible thing. Playing back. And then it's a question of like, oh, did they know? Do, did they know that they did this or didn't they? You know, like that's like a question that we don't know the answer to. Right. Don't make us, I, don't make us ask that question. <laughs> we can't assume anything beyond what you've given us. That's the, mm -hmm. un, un, unfortunately, that's the nature of virtual auditions. We can't do, we can't say, oh, do it again. Oh, you know, if we're in the room with you, it's a little different. Um, if it's a video, we have to assume this is the very best that you can do. So make it the very best that you can do. Um, 100%. Playing back for others, if you're not sure, you know, if you want another set of ears on it, ask your music teacher, your parents, whoever, trusted friends, um, play back and see if they have any critiques or things that they know you can do better. When you are submitting your audition, make sure that the video permissions are set correctly. So in Google Drive, in YouTube, um, making sure it's not a private YouTube video, uh, making sure that it's, if you want it to be private, you can make it unlisted so that only the people with the link can view it. Um, but if you make it private, we can't see it. So it has to be unlisted or public. I think occasionally someone has tried to submit private and give like our email address permission, but that doesn't work because Ben, Rob, and Avi need to see it and they're not logged in at, uh, at Academy, which is usually where I am. So that's why private doesn't work. Yep. Another big thing about auditions is just the way you approach it. And we'll get into this in the next section as well, but making sure you are being confident and you're not apologizing for anything. So if you're sick, if there's, some, if there's something that's not ideal, if there's you know noise in the background or if there's something else, you know we don't really care. It's, we just wanna see you do your best at that moment. Um, and if you're sick, if your voice is a little huskier than normal, it doesn't matter. Um, Sometimes it's a good know, thing. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it adds character. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and like I said before, we can't assume anything that we're not seeing. So if you said, oh, I'm sick and I'm usually way better, we can't trust that, you know, we can only trust what we are hearing. So you may as well act like this is your very best and just like really go for it. Um, and also because, I'll, I'll add to that too. Sorry, Ben, I didn't mean to cut off, but I'll add to that too. Like, I think a lot of the time, you know, if, unless you've completely lost your voice, we can usually hear what your voice sounds like. You know what I mean? It's yeah. even if you're not at you know, a hundred percent, like we've had people audition over the years that have little colds or whatever, and they had a little bit extra rasp or whatever, but you know, if you project that confidence and you put your talent out there, it, it, it still reads, you know, it's, we don't, I don't think, we, I doubt that we have ever watched an audition where somebody was like a little under the weather who was like totally killing it and totally like going to make it. And we were like, you know, they were going to make it, but they just like had a little cough like in there. And it just, it just doesn't really happen that way. Just have confidence and, and know that you're, know that you got it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and like this is also not not just for Acapella Academy, but in general, um, this is something across the board. If you're auditioning for anything, you don't want to apologize and even um, give them a reason to have a skeptical ear towards you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just give it to them how you always would. And also, you know, if you're sicker and you don't have the same range, then change the key to match the range or use a song that that type of uh, voice will really fit, you know? The number of times that, so I'm also a voice teacher um, and the number of times I've told my students, if you don't tell us, we won't know, like straight up, you know, and, and auditioning and performing can be so psychological, right? For yourself and for the viewer. So like Abby said, like, you know, don't, don't point out things to look at negatively, you know, sell it. And, um, and yeah, I've seen in a caption before, like, oh, I know I'm flat in this one part, sorry. And it's like, I don't, <laughs> okay. So guess what we're going to go listen to. <laughs> <laughs> can you sing it not flat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally well yeah if, if you're flat in that one part maybe redo it so that you're not flat. 100 you know redo that you're it. flat there you want to do very best um okay cool and then the last thing on this section is don't procrastinate because this happens all the time people wait to the last second and then of course they get sick the last few days I'm like oh can i have an extension oh you know i was gonna record it this weekend and then i got super sick and you know I know I'm a big procrastinator, um, but for this, if, if it's something that you really care about, I really recommend just starting slow, doing one section at a time and not saving it all to the last second because you just don't know what's gonna happen. Especially now, everything's 
life is so un- unpredictable. Like you just never know what's going to happen in a couple of weeks. At least, um, you know, if you're, if you're somebody that needs that rush of like doing it at the last minute, at least like tell yourself that the last minute is a week earlier. You know what I mean? Like set, set your last minute a little earlier than everybody else's last minute. Mm-hmm. Not our last minute. Not our last minute. <laughs> yeah. The technical uh, difficulties too, like giving yourself time, like if it takes a long time to upload, so you're not stressing out over that, you know, um, back up what you did so you don't accidentally like lose a file if it crap you know just plan ahead a little bit totally yeah i it, it you know make do a few things every day do like a little test one day and then you know learn the part and if you just break it up into more manageable chunks i think that'll be really helpful and then i found a cool little gif here <laughs> And so that's all the technical stuff. Moving on to the artistic side of things. You guys, Ben put a lot of work into this PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> um, doing your research. So, you know, whatever you're auditioning for, making sure you know who they are, what they are, what they stand for, what they're wanna, gonna wanna see from their applicants or auditionees or whatever the case may be, just knowing what they're about. And so watching this presentation is doing your research. Congratulations, you're already doing it because you're mm-hmm. finding out exactly what we look for. Um, and, you know, of course, not everything offers this. So, you know, going to their website, if it's an arts program or a summer program or something like that, um, you know, to getting 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 their vibe check and like seeing what they're about and how you can present yourself as a candidate for them. And uh, some places you audition for, you really won't find that much, but we have a staggering amount of stuff that you can find out about us you know, going through our website, through our social, through our YouTube. And on our, when you go to our audition page specifically that has all the info, all the instructions, there's an article um, where these guys say what they look for. There's also a recommendation that you can go to YouTube and you can look at everyone's academy auditions throughout the years. So you could go down the rabbit hole on YouTube and see so many examples. And a lot of them will say accepted. So you can see what the accepted look, look like as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, next step is authenticity. So this is really tricky for, for you know, 12 to 18 year olds who are still kind of figuring themselves out um, musically, socially, every way. Um, and yeah, it's definitely hard. <clears throat> but when someone is being really authentic to themselves and really finds themselves musically, it's immediately apparent to us. Mm-hmm. Um, and this comes down to a lot of different aspects, but you know, celebrating who you are as a person, your your personality. We love to see exactly who you are. We don't want to see some stiff person. I am going to be auditioning for this camp because you know we want to see you be loose, be fun, um, play to your strengths. And then, Rob, do you want to talk about if you don't know what your strengths are musically? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so I think that a lot of sort of the the base way that a lot of people get this right is just asking, like, what do I love to listen to? Like, what are the things that really excite me? We've seen a lot of people do really well just by performing the things that they love. I think the next step on top of that is do a little research with the people in your life. If you have a teacher that you trust or friends that you trust, um, you know, or people whose musical opinion you trust, something to think about is, you know, beyond just like, what am I going to sing? you know, how am I going to present myself? Like what, you know, what is, um, what is my, what is my X factor as a singer? Um, and, you know, maybe you're someone who's really great at jazz. So, you know, you're going to do songs that have like a little bit of a jazz spin. Maybe you're going to put a little jazz spin on something that doesn't necessarily already have a jazz spin. Um, but then taking it a step further, you can, you know, see that even more, you know, wear something jazzy that you that really feels like communicates, you know, what your vibe is. Film it somewhere where, you know, you feel like, oh, this is an environment that like, I really feel co- like communicates my personality. Um, these aren't things that necessarily like you have to do, but there are things that all kind of subtly add up into a stronger audition um, and, and make something that feels more cohesive. Um, and you'll see in a little bit when we talk about sort of like how we actually do acceptances, um, it, it really is to your benefit to give us a really clear idea of not just you know, what you sound like, but who you are as a performer, who you are as a complete mm-hmm. musician um, because that goes into uh, the choices about, you know, who we're going to take for specific spots that we might need for specific groups mm-hmm. um, or personalities that we feel would be really beneficial in any given year of camp. Um, so the more you can communicate that with not just what, what you sing, but everything in your audition package, it's really to your advantage. Yeah, great. 
And um, I think also like that psychological thing, because auditions can feel kind of awkward. Like sometimes you can be focusing on like, you know, you're kind of being the judge in, in that moment and you can't be the referee and the player at the same time. So it, it, instead of focusing on, am I good? How do I compare against somebody else? You know, what makes me unique? What do I love? And then when you sing to the camera, instead of focusing on yourself, focus on like what you love or another person or another thing. Like obviously we do music, hopefully we do music not just to be good, but because we love it and to communicate something. So if you focus on that and you send that good juju to the camera, that's gonna feel so much better for you and for us watching you than someone who's like focusing on like, is this good, you know? And we're gonna watch some, we're gonna watch some good examples of this in a minute, so we'll get to kind of be more targeted about talking about it. This is something that we say all the time around camp and comparison is the thief of joy. And you'll see later on, you know, there are so many different kinds of singers out there. The popularity of certain styles and sounds will come and go. Um, and I think there's a big tendency, especially among softer voiced people or people who can't riff as well to want to be bigger, it, beltier, it riffier <laughs> singers because that's what's hot, you know? Um, but actually being a belty singer isn't really hot anymore. Um, but <laughs> yeah, so the point is everyone has their own unique voice. You're gonna succeed when you find what that is and really play that up and not when you're comparing yourself to someone else and saying, why can't I sing like them? Um, you know, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. And just really owning your skills and what you can do and what makes you special as a performer. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's, um, there's a place for everyone at camp. You know, we have all different types of groups and that's kind of how we go about selecting and stuff as well. But, you know, we want to see all the things that you can do not all the things that you think you should do, you know, um, we want to see what you're best at. So you have to play to your strengths. Absolutely. We basically already said it, but I've had some students who've observed auditions. One was, like um, like a proctor for like a live audition for people coming in all day. And the other was, it was online. And both of them came to me and they were like, across the board, if somebody was confident, they were better. They were like, even if they like, you could tell that like other people were better singers or whatever, but if they like were timid, it made for a less strong audition. So it's crazy how just selling yourself makes a huge difference. Like you're doing it anyway, so you may as well just do it with confidence. Just fake it, you know? You may be scared out of your mind, but just, you know, be, still be true to yourself and what you're musically good at. But then just once you're going to do it, just really go for it because there's no reason to hold back. Mm -hmm. um, song selection is key. Um, this is, you know, goes back to playing your strengths and, and, you know, maybe like Rob was saying, maybe if you're like a jazzier singer and you want to take a pop song and make it jazzy, uh, maybe you want to do a country folk song. Maybe you want, you know, there's so many different avenues to explore. Um, and I think there have been some like flips of songs that have been really ear catching for us. Um, not required at all, but, um, you know, go beyond I'm a rock singer, so I'm going to do a rock song. Maybe, you know, go outside of the genre um, and also just make sure that the song works, like that, that you can perform that song the best that you possibly can. I've, we've seen a lot of auditions where people try to stretch what they can do and say, I wanna show them that I can do this really high, belty, impressive song, but they don't do it very well. <laughs> uh, they could, like they would show us much better what they could do if they did something a little more comfortable for them where they could nail every single note and really kill the whole thing, as opposed to reaching for this thing that you think they wanna hear and not really doing it that well. Um, yeah, accuracy is much more is much more impressive to me than trying to be impressive. Yeah, I've I've made this mistake myself many times where like I've planned something in audition that had like the highest note in it that I could hit, and then I didn't hit it very well because it was the highest note I could possibly hit. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the people that were auditioning me didn't know that. If I had sung a whole step lower, it would have still been pretty high, and they, I would have actually hit it. And it would have still been a high note. So you don't have to put the, you don't have to go to the extremes of what you can do uh, as long as it's something that you can do really consistently. Excuse my language, but I tell students, 
uh, is the song kicking your ass or are you kicking the song's ass? <laughs> Beth. <laughs> I know, Beth sorry, so racy. You said the ass <laughs> So yeah, so when, when picking songs, comfort is really key. Comfort range-wise, comfort style-wise, um, this is not the place where you want to be stretching your abilities. That's for that's for practice. This is where you show exactly what you can nail and what you're absolutely best at. Mm -hmm. um, so here is, now we're moving on to the actual Academy audition. The first part of the audition is the introduction. Um, most people, you know, this is just fun. This is not at all what you have to do, but we just wanted to show it because it's fun and it shows what's possible. Most people say, hi, I'm Ben. I'm from Los Angeles. I'm a baritone. Here's my audition, which is perfectly fine. But here's a, a fun one. I just want to stress that you don't have to do that. <laughs> it's really important yeah, to understand. Would, made it anyways. You don't have to. But here's the thing: like most of the time, if you don't, if you're not inspired to do something like that, it's totally fine. And we would rather you just do a quick, you know, appropriate punchy intro. I think something a mistake that people do make is that they feel like they have to do some kind of crazy intro when they aren't really inspired to do it, and it's not really it doesn't feel right for them. Um, so if you feel like that's something that you can really do and do well, go for it. But you know, there's no pressure whatsoever to do that. And if you don't feel like that's you, please don't do that because <laughs> it's not necessary. But What's was... perfect about it is it shows a person's personality, right? Yeah. Which, yeah. yeah, whether it's in an intro or just somewhere in your video, we love seeing who you are. The bottom line for intros is have fun. And where's the next one? Make them, make them good or make them short. And be yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we love the weirdness, you know, we're all weird here. So, okay, that's going to be irritating to do that every time. Okay, moving on. Uh, main skill. This is the, the meat of the audition. Um, if you are primarily a soloist um, or part singer, this, this is going to be your thing. You're going to do the solo. And here we have four contrasting solos, which I think shows what we were talking about before about really owning what you are good at specifically. Um, and I think this shows these show it really nicely. So I'm going to play the four of them. Grab your coat and snatch your hat. Leave your worries on the doorstep. Just direct your feet to the sunny side of the street can't you hear that pit of head and the happy tune is your step life can be so sweet on the sunny side of the street I so there's the first one really awesome okay 36 37 here's the next one this is non-stop, baby, you got me going crazy, you're heavier than I knew. And I don't want no other, you my cameo lover, only here for a moment or two. Stay inside that bubble with all of your trouble in your black hole. You turn from the skies and dance with your demise. I'll be here when you come home. Home. 
There's that one. I don't need a whole lot of money. I don't need a big five car. I've got everything that a girl could want. I got more than I could ask for. I don't have to run around. I don't have to stay up all night. Cause I got sweet, sweet loving they am. And he knows just how to treat me right. See my baby, he's alright. See my baby, we're so tight. Don't you know he is? Phone stone, cold stone, cold. I was your amber, but now she's your shade of gold stone, cold baby. God knows I try to feel happy for you. No. Yeah, so these are four great examples of people being completely authentic to their musical selves, their personalities, their vibes, and all four of them made us feel really comfortable watching. We're like, this is what you do. This is great. We can absolutely envision you in a specific group based on this audition. Um, and no, none of them really pushed far outside of their abilities. Um, you know, the, the last one had really high notes in it, but you could tell she's comfortable with it. She's saying that a lot. Um, it was in her comfort zone and yeah, anything to add? I just, I think it's the control of style. I think that's a lot of it. Like regardless of whatever your style is, I think that we usually react really positively to knowing that you have control over what you're doing. I think that's, that's sort of a common thread with all of those. It's just like, you're projecting, you know, whether if you have a lighter voice, that's fine, but you're really leaning into that. You're choosing a song that shows that off. You're not trying to be something that you're not. You're just doing that thing. Um, you know, we, and we can just see that you're comfortable doing it. Uh, I think that's really has a lot to do with, you know, whatever the style is. That's like the common denominator in my mind. Yeah. And when people pick songs like these that are so comfortable for them and so effortless, um, it, it makes our decision so easy. Um, cause it does happen that really good singers pick songs that aren't perfect for them. And we have to kind of wrap our ears around it and say, oh, okay. It was a little bit of the song choice. It was a little bit of that. Um, yeah, it makes you the, guess. yeah, the more barriers like that you put, the more difficult it is to get in. If you do something like this and it's so clear and so comfortable, it makes our job really easy. I also want to point out like none of those, well, maybe Claudia, none of those were like completely flawless. You know what I mean? They were, they weren't like without any, you know, little pitch thing here and there, a little sound thing, whatever. Um, you can have, you know, it doesn't need to be without flaw because sometimes in fact, flawless is soulless, you know, flawless can be, you know, actually not communicative. So if you are, if you're given it, if you're putting yourself in that zone, it's okay if you're like, you know, a little under, a little over, if it works for what you're doing. That's the thing. Got to work for the style. It's about control. As long as you have control over your voice, over your style, it's all good. It's all gravy. Because um, there are pitch moments that do indicate a lack of control. Right. Uh, but none of these did. This was just kind of natural human pitchiness, which happens when you sing. <laughs> Hashtag um, natural human pitchiness. Yeah. Okay, next slide. Oh, okay, no, 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 no. Oh, common pitfalls. This is our little icon. Uh, this is nuts. A little banana peel. Um, are there any common pitfalls to solo singing that we haven't talked about yet? Not picking the right part of the song to start from. Oh, that's a good one. So when we listen to these auditions, you know, we have hundreds and hundreds of auditions to listen through. And so if the if the really great moment is, you know, 40 seconds in, we may not get that far because we have to listen to it. solo parts again, like we have to go through the whole thing. So um, really putting your best foot forward in all ways in this audition is really beneficial to you. 
um, and really finding the part of the song that is like, that is great. And it might be, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go to the highest, loudest part. It just means that if the verse of a particular song is maybe a little boring, um, doesn't give you a chance to really shine, and the pre-course is where you want to start from, start from the pre-course. This might be kind of obvious, but um, in the key of the song and the range, you know, like it's not cheating to change it from the original key, or if a, oh, yeah. like, you know, if, if something fits pretty good, except for maybe a low note here or there, change, change the tune. We don't care. In fact, those things might actually be pluses instead of minuses. 100%. A lot of times people will sing really, really, really low in their range, just so that when they hit the high note, the high note's comfortable, but it means that you're at the very bottom of your voice for like over half of your song, which isn't great. Right. So just pick that section, because when we do songs in groups at camp, we change the keys all the time, and also we switch off soloists. So, you know, we're going to give the soloist in the chorus, it's going to fit perfectly in their voice. Um, for just that one section. And, and then someone else with a lower voice is going to take the verse. Um, so, you know, you don't have to sing a super rangy song all the way through. Just I, I would honestly second. say to, to, make, to make any auditioner's job easier, make sure you wind up in the best part of your range, whatever you feel that is, in the first, at most, 10 seconds of whatever you're singing. Like it's, what's the people, what's the, the scientific thing? Like people make up their minds about something within like seven seconds or something like that. It's like some crazy short amount of time. Like make sure that you are putting your best foot forward, whatever that means to you in that first, you know, seven to 10 seconds. Yeah, and that doesn't mean hitting the high note. Yeah. So that's probably just gonna be the middle of your voice. Um, just wherever it's just like comfortable and effortless. Okay, great, moving on. Okay, when they, when um, they, when if they. you are a bass, this is for you. Um, if you are primarily, primarily a bass singer, you wanna put that first, we wanna see that first thing. Um, don't do your solo first. If you're a bass, we're, you're gonna be doing bass lines. So do, do your bass line first. You um, thought you were gonna <laughs> sing words, come on. Come on. <laughs> and then let me just go to the end of this. This is irritating me. Okay, um, so bass, things we look for. I'm gonna talk about it, I'm gonna play it, and I'm gonna talk about it again. Uh, pitch, really important. You're the foundation of the group. You gotta be in tune. Tone, you gotta have a nice tone. Um, you don't have to sing super low. Um, you know, an E, e flat is all you really need, um, but it has to be a nice sound down there. Uh, rhythm. Obviously you have to be really in time. It's a rhythmic foundation as well. Um, and then style, singing the bass line in whatever style that bass line is meant to be sung. So I'll talk about that after we listen to this. This is Simon from New Zealand. I'm gonna be doing the bass line from Superstition by Stevie Wonder. One of my favorite songs, I like it. Awesome. So, um, bases, the ability of our basses is kind of across the board. There are some basses that are very experienced singing this style, um, as Simon is. There are some sick, like choral singers with low voices who just have great instruments um, and have and great pitch, but don't really know this vocal bass thing. Um, so I think the ability is really across the board, and we definitely do take people basses um, who don't have vocal bass practice who are quick learners and we work with them. Um, so that's just a quick note. Do you guys have something to say? I saw, saw some movement. Uh, yeah, Avi, do you have anything you want? I've, I've got a few things. Yeah, yeah, I mean. Um, as our, as the bass, give as, me the floor. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I when I listen to a bass singer, I wanna make sure that um, they're not trying to sing lower than they can, um, that they, 
had the ability to be able to sing soft and loud. Um, and honestly, what I would say would be to just do a little bit of research on what an acapella vocal bass sounds like. And you can have different tones, but when I'm looking at a bass, it's 100% the pitch, accuracy, um, the rhythm. And then lastly is the tone. Um, I feel like a lot of basses really uh, try to swallow their sound and make it sound bigger um, than it really is. Um, and, and you don't need to do that. Just use your natural voice and show that you can be 100% in tune and 100% in time because that is really the most important thing. You know, you may be able to sing a solo at Academy, but what we're looking for is to see that you can do what you're signing up to do. Um, and, and basses really have, have to be the most in tune. They're gonna be the only person on their part. And they're also gonna be this, the other part of the rhythm section. So you have to be 100% in time. Um, so just to recap, don't sing anything that's out of your range. Um, you know, uh, and, and don't try to change your, your voice in order to make it sound lower. Um, and really just show that you can sing in tune and in time. And, and I think that for us, when we listen to somebody sing a bass line um, and it's not in tune, all we are getting is that version of you. We don't, we're not your choir directors. We don't know how you can usually do it um, or that you can do it. When you send something off to us and it's, and it's out of tune, then we assume that you don't know that it's out of tune. And if you don't know that it's out of tune, then you can't be in a group. You know, you're really going to, um, take away from the group. So think about all those things and just know that also if you're a bass with, without a huge lower register, you don't really need to try to show that you have a lower range than you do. It's that, really- That example, in fact, was not accurate. that low. Like Simon, No, not, I mean, not low at all. And yeah, that wasn't- tone isn't necessarily a super bassy tone, but he's extremely accurate and he has a great groove. So listening to him, I can tell, oh man, he's really going to add to a group and I can personally work with him to get his tone right for a microphone. But honestly, off mic, he would be perfect. Um, and he was killer, he was amazing. Yeah, and same thing with, you know, the different styles question. Like if you, your thing might not be like octave jumps and, you know, crazy bouncy bass lines, that's fine. Like if you are somebody that just like can really nail Sing rock. You know what I mean? Like that, if you did that bass line, we'd be like, that was a really good bass line. A little uh, Mark Hoppus bass line there. <laughs> yeah, you know, just like, <laughs> just chilling. Um, but, you know, again, like, don't don't feel like you have to fit into somebody else's mold of, of talent. You know, whatever, whatever your thing is, you know, do it. Yeah. yeah, just to add to that, I think a lot of basses fall into the pitfall of singing too loudly when they're doing this, they're, oh, rah, rah, which is kind of a high school choir thing. Um, yeah. And when you're doing acapella bass, it's softer than you think. It's always softer than you think because when you're on mic, this, the lower resonance is gonna come only when you dial it back and really let your chest resonate. Um, which yeah, and when, really when we hear someone go over the top and try to be as loud as they possibly can, even if it's in tune and, and it's impressive, it makes me think, how are they possibly going to be able to be a bass in a group when they're singing that loud? It shows it shows me that that you don't have restraint um, and that you won't be able to blend with your group and that you won't be able to sing on mic. And you know, and and if that is something that that really is um, a strength of yours, then maybe do something with that then and it's perfectly in time and in tune, but then also show that you can sing quieter. I think it's really, really important that we know that you can be in time, in tune, and that you can have a low resonance, you know. Also, I've heard a lot of basses, um, especially if their voice isn't the lowest. Um, basically, the lower in your voice that you try to sing loud, the more likely it is that you'll sing sharp. Very true. Mm -hmm. Cool, let's move on from bass. Uh, let's just go all the way to the end. By the way, while we're moving, so we're collecting the questions from the chat, y'all. So we will address those questions later on. Um, we're not ignoring you. We're just trying to get through all the all the basics and then we'll go back and answer questions. So for Beatbox VP, um, we have a similar kind of set of things that we, <laughs> this is Emma Watson 
<laughs> Beatbox is good. <laughs> um, so time, let me go back one so we're not distracted by Emma. There we go. <laughs> um, we have time, you know, just literally just basically keeping time and not rushing and not dragging. Very simple, just that. Then there's groove, which is the feel, um, which is, you know, does it feel right in this musical style? Um, do, if, it, if there's a little swing to it, does it swing? Is it not totally rigid and, and robotic? Um, does it feel, feel good, basically? Um, musicality, which is making sure all your fills, making sure everything that you choose, every hit that you do um, serves the music. And this is something we run into a lot with beatboxers who are coming from the beatbox world and have an amazing range. The next thing is palette, amazing sounds, um, amazing things that they can create and combinations. Um, but then when it comes to simplifying and being really musical in a group setting, some of them have difficulty kind of dialing it back. So if you are a beatboxer um, who does a lot of that crazy over the top stuff. That's awesome and we love to see that, but make sure you also show us that you can be simple and support a group um, in the way that you need to. And there are a lot of people that um, kind of do both that you can see if you go to our auditions. Um, let's watch Tucker and then we'll talk a little more. Anyway, so that's Tucker. Rob, do you want to talk about like why you like that? Yeah, I mean, so I, I chose that one to show for this because I think it's just such a great example of building musicality into a solo beatbox performance. You guys are reacting in the chat to exactly what I was reacting to when I saw this, which is like, he, he started off with this really simple, this just breathing, that was all it was. And then just layered in these other parts and really took us on a, a journey with what he was doing. Um, that's something I think that people really take for granted and don't do very often with solo beatbox things. Um, just keep in mind that it is just like a vocal performance. Like it's, it can have an arc to it and it can have a, a real musicality to it. Um, and something else that I love about, about Tucker's audition for this thing. And one of the things that I really look for, um, something that I think differentiates like pretty good percussionists from really good percussionists is how much they pay attention to the little things that connect everything. And you'll see like with Tucker's like all the like, like all that stuff, it, like he, he keeps it right in the pocket, doesn't rush, doesn't drag, it's all right there. There's a, I'm not sure I'll be able to model this well, but there's a difference between like, where everything in the middle is really lined up versus like sometimes what we hear is like, where people are really just focused on like the big moments and the stuff in between is, is sloppy or just not really clear. You want to make sure that all the parts of it are really clear. Um, I think this models that really well. Yeah, one thing, the way that he breaks it down at the beginning lets us know that he knows exactly what the building blocks of this is. So a lot of beatboxers, when they go full a thousand percent right away, it makes us doubt, like, could they actually break it down into something more simple? Could, do they know how to break the beat down into something that can support a group? Whereas this is certain, we're certain because of the way that he broke it down, that he understands how to dial it back and how to dial it back tastefully, 
So that was really cool to see. Um, other, any other common pitfalls of beatboxers, vocal percussionists? Yeah, I w so I wanna add too. So palette is the last thing on this list. I would say for a reason, um, I think that palette palette meaning the number of sounds you can make um or like so, what the, what the sounds are yeah what this like what the sounds are. Yeah. are yeah right so like you know if, if you have like a all whatever all, all those different sounds that you can do that's great if you can incorporate those that's awesome um some people come in and can just do like but they do it really really well and they can do it with some really cool patterns and that's totally great um, we've had people come to camp who really don't have a lot of sounds that they can do. Um, and they wind up in a group where that's fine. That works well for the group that we put them in. Um, but I, yeah, groove, time, groove, musicality are more important, I think, than the number of sounds you can make. I think that's a pitfall that people get in a lot where they like a word like, oh, I need to like do these eight different kinds of snares. Mm -mm. You can do one snare really well. If you can do more than that, great. That one snare, find your snare. <laughs> For sure. Um, cool. Moving on. Uh, we're going to go into part singing now. Um, so there are two part singing examples. Uh, one of them is George on my mind. Um, and they are contrasting. So we look for different things in each of them. Um, in Georgia, we're primarily looking for blend and vowels and matching up with how the part tapes do it, um, making sure you're pitch accurate, rhythm accurate, and the style is appropriate for this example. So let's listen to Emily. Cool, so things to listen for in this. Um, vibrato, when there's vibrato, it's at the end of the notes, uh, the scoops, when those move, um, and just the overall vibe of this uh, ar arrangement. And you know, we wanna know that you can hear something and immediately kind of sink into it and blend and match with what's going on. Um, anything else on Georgia? Yeah, I mean, every aspect of it. I mean, I think that also the other thing about it is um, dynamics. I love to see someone that can sing some dynamics. That makes me very, very happy. Yeah, this is another area too where like, again, like we assume whatever you put in this audition is your best shot at it. You know what I mean? So we see, we see parts a lot where some part of the part singing was okay, but you know, they messed up another thing. If you mess it up, like, do it again because you know we we assume that you got this thing had basically as much time to do it as you wanted because you've got three months to do it um and whatever you're showing us is your best shot at it so make sure that it really is your best shot at it um it's tough it's tough to get into camp with big pitch or rhythm errors in your part singing yeah if we really 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 like you maybe we'll ask you to do it again because we think you can do better but don't count on that yeah. Um, that's like a last, yeah, don't count on that. Um, that's only if everything else was amazing and we like really want to make sure. Um, another thing about Georgia, I totally just forgot what it is. We'll come back to this. I think it'll be good because we're going to, we're going to see the difference between some, somebody later on who auditioned and didn't get in and then auditioned yeah. and got in. And we're going to well, see the difference. I don't know, in those parts. You know, there was a breath in a really weird place that we've seen. And then you have to come back in and you have to, it's just what Rob was talking about, like mistakes that are kind of probably easy if you just listen back and make sure that you're lining up with everyone. Because the, the background singers in the track, they take breaths at specific, very specific places. Um, yeah, cool. Georgia, moving Next on. slide. This is I Wish. So it's a very different example. It's a lot more rhythmic. It's a lot more soulful, poppy, rather than choral or jazzy. Um, and, well, this is a little jazzy too, but, so the main things in this are groove, not necessarily rhythm, 
uh, but groove and how you can feel that groove and where you place each note. And I'm going to point out one of the common pitfalls after we listen to Jeffrey. Um, and also this one is a lot more dissonant than the last one. So there's a lot, there's some crunching harmonies. And when we hear you sing it, the where you place the note kind of lets us know if you have an ear for that and if you can really tuck in those harmonies in the exact right place for them to work. And then style and soul, of course, just making sure that it sounds nice and sounds how it should in this soulful style. Let's take a listen. Days could come back, oh, days end. Why did they have to go? Days could come back, oh, days end. Ooh, I love them so. Do 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 do. I wish we could like quantify all of the musical data in what he just sang, because there's so many things to think about. That's a really Ben Bram sentence. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everything from the attacks. Is it a glottal attack? Um, oh, instead of oh, oh, and then do 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 do, the little vibrato there. Um, days could have to go. Um, the little scoop days could. Yeah. There's just so and the dynamic variety, even from like like micro moment to micro moment. You know what I mean? It's not just this monotone one level thing. There's lots of nuance. So much. There's so many things, and it would be impossible for us to point them all out. So part of this is seeing how much of it you can catch. Right, and you probably honestly shouldn't be thinking about all these things specifically when you're doing it because it's you, you'll get in your own head and you won't do it right. Um, so it's really more about I think the way to the way to absorb this information is to listen to it a lot and try and sing along with it and just sort of get it in your muscle memory. Yeah. One thing that Jeffrey could have done better that I want to point out is one little rhythm thing. Could have gotten a haircut too. <laughs> hey, don't say that. Days could come back. So the back, the back is a little early. It's really laid back. Come back. Dun -da, dun -da. So if you're listening, that's one thing from this that can be critiqued. Everything else is pretty much perfect. Um, and then the, the doo-doos were a little funky, some of it, but basically really, really good example is this one. Um, cool, moving on. I have one pitfall. Um, I noticed this like at ICCs or IC, actually ICHSAs. So if you come from a classical choral background, just if you've never sung in an acapella group, just know that this is not the same thing. So it's gonna feel a lot more like singing like a soloist who blends well. If you've only ever sung solo singing and pop and whatever, this is gonna feel a little more choral to you. So it's just understanding where you are and then where you need to be for what this is. Yes, very well said. Um, okay, cool, moving on to secondary skills. Secondary skill is just basically the same things that we've already talked about. If you are primarily a beatboxer, vocal percussionist, then we're going to want to hear you sing a solo. Or if you're also, if you can sing bass, do a bass line. Basically, whatever other uh, skill you want to present. And this is optional. Um, just if you do multiple things, do that. And then also, if you're not sure, if you say you are a vocal percussionist and tenor, and you're not sure which to classify yourself as, you don't know which one is your main thing. If, if you do them equally, ask people, you know, say like, do you think I'd have better chances getting in doing this or that? And whatever is your absolute strongest, according to you and other people, do that first at the beginning. Um, there have been examples when vocal percussionists will present themselves as singers and will end up taking them as vocal percussionists. Um, so just kind of be aware of that and eliminate any any of that fishing that we have to do. Um, we would love for you to know that you're better at vocal percussion, you know? <laughs> Sometimes there's just no way to know though, but yeah. Um, miscellaneous skills, this is a really fun section and we get lots of treats. Uh, so I just wanna point out a couple of cool ones. You know, don't feel like you have, this is another optional thing, only if there's something that you feel like you're really good at and that's fun and different. 
but don't feel like you have to do one of these. Uh, ba -ba -ba. <laughs> people, a lot of people sing in other languages, which is really fun. Um, this is one in Mandan. <laughs> Awesome. Here's another one. Um, self multi tracking. Jacob Collier cover. So awesome. Um, cool. Moving on from miscellaneous skills. Quick note about both of those. I just want to add, Beth put it in the chat too, but I think it's important is that both of those things were really, they were a big part of those people's personalities. And then they also, they really informed like where they wound up in the groups that they wound up in. So um, for Heesh's thing that we saw the first, the, the Mondan song that wound up in the set that they did that year at Academy. They actually used that specific skill um, for that group set. Um, and then for um, Lazaro, like th that was, I remember that was a question of like, you know, his solo was a little bit more classical and we weren't really sure like what his vibe was. And then we saw that and we're like, oh, okay, cool. Like he totally gets this vibe also. Um, so it really helped kind of shape our impression of him as a singer. Um, so that's really a lot of what miscellaneous skills can do besides just being entertaining is just give us that little extra window of like, oh, what are you good at? Like, what can we really utilize you for in a specific group? Yeah, it shows us your personality, but it also shows us like what you're interested in. It's like clearly this person spends a lot of time on music, you know, so it's, it's giving us more information about you. Absolutely. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, personal statement. So this is the little cherry on top of the whole audition um, and it's it's pretty telling because it just is a chance for us to just get to know you a little bit and for you to kind of communicate why you want to come um, and these are you know it's all across the board we get so many different vibes and energies and I think you know we want you to be yourself but overall we want to see that you have a curiosity about music um, oops a love of music, a collaborative spirit, everything about acapella at, at camp is about cooperation and teamwork. And so we wanna make sure that everyone that we admit is really down to do that and really um, you know, able to compromise about musical things and consider other people's perspectives and point of views. And there have been instances where we get people who are extremely driven and very singularly focused and, but maybe don't quite have that um, collective thing yet. Um, and th there are some people that have had that on their first audition and then we kind of give them a, a chance and they come and then they change. And that's really cool to see. But I think the more you can really understand that vibe and present it to us and embody it, the more we're gonna be like, yes, that is exactly what we're looking for. Um, and they would be a great fit for camp. Um, because yeah, we have had people be like, yeah, you know, I think it would be a great place to network and advance my own career. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> and that's, we don't really want to see that. I mean, of course, that is a, one of the things that happens at camp. Um, but that can't be the be all and end all. It has to be more than that. There has to be a little bit of like, I love working with people and music makes me so happy. And, you know, there has to be another level beyond that. 
great. I'm, <laughs> so we want to root for you, yeah? Make us be like, yes, we love it. Come to camp right now. Okay, so this is a fun section. Um, we, with permission, we took uh, auditions from people when they didn't get in and showed then when they re-auditioned and did get in. Um, so we have a few examples of that and we'll talk about it. So this is Monica Saxton. When you're weary, feeling small, when tears are in your eyes, I will dry them all. I'm on your side. Oh, when times get rough and friends just can't be found like a bridge over troubled waters. I will lay me down like a bridge. So that's the first one. Um, should we talk about that first before we do the next or should we do both? Yeah, well, let's watch them both and then we can talk about the difference. And then here's in 2016. I gotta keep myself in check sometimes. Cause I tend to dream real big sometimes. Fancy outfits and the sparkly awards. My name and last the people lined up at the doors. But I gotta remember, take it one step at a time. People seem to think that you'll be happier once you reach the top. You'll have it all. I'm living for it now. Cause what if tomorrow never comes? I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting for the coming fate to fall. Cool. So an interesting thing that I noticed about these <clears throat> is that she's actually a little pitchier on the one where she did get in versus when she didn't get in, mm. which leads to show you how, what we're looking for beyond just pitch accuracy. Um, do you, anyone want to jump in on what their reaction? So, yeah, I mean, so I would say, even though she's a little bit pitchier, I think the what made up the gap for me was the phrasing, right? And obviously her energy was better um, and she's got her energy, you know, was even better in the years following. But I think if you listen to Bridge Over Trouble Water, there's like, there's breaths in weird places. There's like not really moving through the ends of phrases. There's, there, you know, there's a, it's a little bit more careful and stilted where you're right, it's a little bit more accurate, but it just doesn't really, there's, no, there's not much storytelling to it. And with confetti, there's a much more, you know, she's breathing in the right spot. There's energy that's moving the way that it should. Um, and I think you know, there's a trade-off that's okay there with accuracy if you're, a little bit if it just feels better yeah i mean and for it, me I, I feel like you know um the person on the left in 2015 i would be worried about that person going on stage and singing with other people or even singing in a group i would feel like you know usually at camp you know a lot of people are singing one and apart you have to be um you have to be strong and confident on, on your part and the person on the left i would very much worry for that person she is a has a beautiful voice, great pitch accuracy, but she seems extremely nervous. Um, and so I would worry for her being on stage, which, you know, then, then she wouldn't be able to come to camp. But the person on the right, I could see her on stage and I could see her holding her, her part um, with other people around, you know? Um, so it's extremely important that you show that confidence and that energy and that performance. You don't need to be over the top by any means, but uh, we need to be able to imagine you on stage with other people holding your own part. I think this was, uh, oh, sorry, Beth, go ahead. Oh, this is a good example of what we were talking about before about you want to be in the comfy part of your range soon because she's really scraping the bottom for a long extended period of time in the first one. And in the second one, we hear the sweet spot of her voice almost right away. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think this is an interesting thing to point out that I believe in 2015, I was a, a yes because I just loved the way she sounded. And I was like, oh, you know, she'll, she'll, 
get more confident when she comes to camp. And, um, you know, I was kind of rooting for her. Um, and so I just want to kind of point out that, you know, we don't always agree 100% on everything is that when we're going through these, we all have different reactions. And even what Rob came away with just now versus what Avi came away with led to the same conclusion, but they were different observations. And, um, you know, we're all different people. So we come at things differently. Um, so I just want to kind of point that out is that it's not always unanimous. Um, of course, I was, I was like, yeah, you're, you're probably right. You know, she probably needs another year. Um, but I really love the way she sounded in 2015. Also, she was, you know, looking down, um, just, you know, very scared, but sounded amazing. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes that's, sometimes that decision winds up coming down to what the pool of auditions is as well. Like it's not, these decisions aren't made in a vacuum. Like, you know, it's not a yes or no about a person. It's yes or no about a person based on everybody that auditioned that year. So there may have been a year where the talent pool was different and in 2015, Monica might've made it. You know, it's, it's, it just depends what we're looking for in that year and who else auditions. Because um, she certainly was not bad. Um, but, you know, there were other people that year that were just more what we were looking for. Yeah. Great. Next. Here's another example. Um, so this is for part singing. Days could come back all days end. Why did they have to go? Days could come back. So before we move on to Georgia, <clears throat> just want to kind of react to that one. So stylistically, not quite right. The scoops aren't really in the right places. Um, there's some pitch issues going on and also some rhythm stuff, especially with the snapping. So we ask about the snapping specifically so we can see how people groove in I Wish. So mm, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. there's a real like physical embodiment of the groove that happens when you have to physically do it. So it's very apparent when people aren't really grooving. Um, so this was an example where she wasn't really grooving. She was snapping and it was like almost in time, but it certainly wasn't grooving. Um, anything else to add to that? And then let's do I Wish in 2020. Days could come back all days end. Why did they have to go? Days could come back all days end. Ooh, I love them so. Cool. So certainly wasn't perfect, but it was a lot better in 2018. And it did. One of the, one of the biggest differences I, I heard is that she's using more, uh, more parts of her voice to do it, right? She's using more chest voice. She's flipping to the head voice for the doo 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 for, for that stuff. Um, whereas in the first one, it mostly was in that kind of lighter, hootier head voice, which was not right for that style. So somewhere between 2018 and 2020, she kind of learned how to use that part of her voice and it was way better for that example. Yeah, absolutely. So just seeing that that progression is is really cool for us too, just to see like, oh yeah, now it's it's gotten so much better and things are just falling into place more. Um, so here's just like, should we do I, uh, uh, Georgia or just should we maybe just move on? We can just move on. We're, we're, yeah. yeah so long. All right, here's a, a big one. <laughs> so Angela auditioned for three years and she made it in 2020. Um, so let's listen to these solos. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So a little bit rough and she attempted a little run that didn't quite happen. Next one. I can feel the sun whenever you're near. Every time you touch me, I just melt away. No, everybody asks me why I'm smiling up from ear to ear. 
So this one I would say is a, like a song choice where she went really kind of really went for it, which is great in spirit, but in practice, um, her tone wasn't quite right. She didn't have a lot of control. Um, and so, and overall didn't put her in the best light. getting a lot better. I think the song choice was really good and she had more control, but still a little bit of control issues with navigating different parts of her voice, some pitch stuff, um, but it's definitely like going in the right direction here. Feelings are fleeting, but now I'm surrounded. Visions of you save into the side of my head and as i sleep on the other side of the country i wonder how it feels to be safe from the palm of your hands and so much better so yeah this one she chose a great song for her. Her voice has gotten so much stronger and more comfortable and can navigate all the different uh, parts of her voice. Um, and her control is on point and just like really nailed it. Um, and I think a lot of this is just a matter of like growing into your voice too. You know, the voice is still developing at this age. Um, so, you know, you can practice as much as you want, but like sometimes it just has to, you just need more time. Um, so I think this was a really cool progression. Any other thoughts from you guys? It was a little bit song choice, I think, too. Like, I think that that last, that last song, you're right, it's partially like developing those parts of your voice, but then also that last song showed all those parts of her voice, whereas the other songs were really kind of hanging out. The difference between 2018 and 2019 actually was huge, where it was like 2018 was so belty and 2019 was so light. And then 2020 was like some, was the porridge that was just right. You know what I mean? It was like, finding that that spot absolutely for me i love i said in the chat but i just love how resilient this is right like she auditioned four times but like good on you angela you kept auditioning and you got it in 2020 yay we love a resilient person it's inspiring for me um but also it feels like you also learned who you were you know what i mean at first was it like oh were you just trying to show off like what you could do or like what you maybe thought would be impressive and then it really started to feel like the most impressive thing was just you being like authentic um, and I feel like that really came across. Love it. Absolutely. Um, another thing I want to point out Wait. is just that Angela, just... Wants, Angela wants to say something also if you want oh. to let her. You don't want to mute her? Do I have, oh I have. You can unmute her, yeah. I'm, uh, I don't have that screen up. Hold on, I don't either. Uh, here, Ben, talk. I'm gonna, Angel, I'm gonna find I you. Got it, I got it, I got it. You can oh, search. There we go. So. Uh, yeah, I definitely, like, part of the reason I left it up, because I was a little embarrassed by the fact, but I also knew it was part of, like, a growth process. And, like, my 2017, I was, like, very belty. I wanted to show up, like, I can belt. But then I think over the years, I really came a lot more comfortable with my voice and my style. And, like, that's obviously really evident in 2020 when I, like, pick songs I just really liked instead of songs I thought would show off my voice. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Um, so, so glad you kept at it. <laughs> yeah, and, and that, that's the thing, like, I, th I think this is such great experience just to have this record of yourself. Um, and for, for other people, like, even if you are looking at this and you're saying, I'm, I'm not good enough to get in this year, just audition anyway, because this, the process of making this audition is gonna help you grow and, and help you look back and say, okay, what can I do better next time? And just the, the process of preparing, choosing songs, going through all this is such good practice. So I really recommend everyone, even if you're a hundred percent sure you're not good enough to get in this year, um, I really suggest to everyone to to still go for it because it's just part of the experience. You really so, never know. Yeah. And not just for us, but always be looking for opportunities to record, collaborate, perform, audition, because the more you do it, the better at it you're going to be. You'll learn from all of those. You'll be less nervous because you'll be informed by that life experience. And like, if you're a musician, hopefully you love it so much that you're trying to do it 
as often as you can in lots of different ways. So like, go for it. And then you'll have done all this cool stuff that you can then showcase in an audition like this. Like, look at all this cool stuff I did over the last year, you know? Yeah, cool. Uh, obvious to go soon. So let's talk about our selection process. Um, what's our method? How do we put groups together? When do you guys want to take it? Sure. Um, so basically our method is we get all the auditions in, um, we'll do a first round um, where uh, we'll usually we'll split up the list in some way um, and we'll we'll just do a first round look um, we're just really looking at like the basics of, of what's happening solo blend um, just you know doing a quick look through all that stuff just to identify like is this is this person in the ballpark or are they not really there yet um, and if they're in the ballpark they go to round two round two we take a closer look at it um, we watch through everything a little bit more carefully and really start to figure out, you know, who, who's at the top of the heap, who's, you know, good, but not super cutting it. Um, and then we get down to basically at, at the end, the decision becomes a little bit more, um, well, I guess the first thing we do is we all sign off on people independently. So we'll have the people that made it to the second round and anybody that the three, the three of us watch independently and all agree on, you're in. Great. Um, if there's anybody that's a question mark, like one person's totally in, but, or two people are totally in, one person's a little on the fence, that person kind of goes in the middle. Um, and then our ultimate kind of deliberation round is the three of us talking about the people that hit the middle of the pile. Um, and it goes one, one way or the other. And that really winds up often being based on the talent pool and who else auditioned and our conversations of, you know, what do we need? What are we thinking? Um, and then it's a little bit uh, about putting the groups together as well. So um, do you wanna... I wanna talk about slots yeah. on it. So when we let people in, um, we haven't made the groups yet. We have, but we have like ascertained a certain number of slots for certain things. So for instance, um, you know, if we know we're having eight groups in a year, we're not going to let in more than eight vocal percussionists, um, eight primary vocal percussionists. We may, if we have like another, an extra good vocal percussionist who's a great musician who can also sing, we may take them off of vocal percussion, make them a, a, a singer. Um, so that's kind of how we look at that. Same thing with basses. Maybe there's a great bass who can also sing baritone. Okay, we have too many basses, we'll move into baritone. Um, Stuff like that. So we we basically make sure we have the right number of rhythm section, um, and then generally that we're happy with our the rest of our numbers. That we have enough tenors and, and baritones um, to have you know a full sounding group, um, and then we kind of just admit that whole swath of people, um, and then after that we go and we start to actually put the groups together and we say who are our uh, directors. What are their styles going to be this year? Um, you know, what's the vibe going to be? And then we usually start with the rhythm section. We're like, okay, bass and drums, you know, who, which rhythm section feels right for this group. And then we just go down the line and just continue and keep all those things in mind and think about, we think about personalities. We think about, um, you know, all the stuff that we mentioned from the, from the audition, the, the personal statements, the miscellaneous skills, um, and just try to build the best, get my next slide going, the best possible group possible. I, I think of it as like a team of superheroes. You know, they, everyone each brings their own special skills to the group to like make an unstoppable force. Yeah, and we do know, so I, I think to clarify the like, you know, what do we know about what the groups are gonna be when we're doing auditions? We don't necessarily know specifically what the groups are gonna be, but we do know kind of like, because we know who our staff's gonna be for that year and we know what kinds of groups they potentially wanna do. So we know, for example, like, oh, we're gonna have, we know we're gonna have a jazz group. Like we know we're gonna have a folk group this year. We know like we, you know, we know we have that stuff. So um, there've been instances in the past where, you know, somebody maybe isn't like the best singer for every style, but we know like this year specifically, we're gonna have a folk group and they've got a really great folk sound. So we're like, you know what? They're gonna go in that group, perfect. And that's sort of how that, that decision gets made. Uh, Avi, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, um, I, th I think for me, you mean in terms of the groups or just in general? Just in general. Um, in general, I mean, you know, I, I think we covered most of everything. I, I think, you know, we're looking for people that um, not only are extremely talented um, and we know they can do the part, but um, really people with good hearts that we feel like are going to really add to the family um, 
and that will really uh, contribute to the energy that's that's there. Um, I think for me, that's that's probably the biggest thing. Um, if you can sing in tune and you can sing in time, and you have a good heart, you're probably going to make it. And if not, then try next, you know, try next year. Cool. Um, anything else on the main stuff we want to cover? Maybe we should get into questions now. We might have to let we might have to let Avi go and have Ben and I do the questions. I'll I'll stick around for some questions. Stick around for a minute. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. So final thoughts on this. Um, like I said before, don't overthink this. Uh, you can audition for free. Um, it's not a commitment yet. So like this year, it's on flux. You can audition and then decide that you can't do it. So audition, audition, audition. Even if you think you're not good enough, audition anyway. That's just my my spiel, and I'm going to spread it far and wide. I think it's a great. It there's no downside. Um, so just do it. Uh, should we open for questions, or maybe talk about the Zoomathon first, then do questions? Talk about the Zoomathon. Yeah, let's yeah. finish our spiel, and then we'll do questions. Um, yeah, well, actually, right right before that, um, you know, I, I would just like to say audition don't let money be something that's going to hold you back don't let where you live be something that's going to hold you back um just audition and and if you make it we will do everything possible to make sure that you can come you know we want to make sure that you also do your part to be able to come but um i don't think there's ever been one person that's made it that has not been able to come because of financial issues or because of where they live um so just audition and um yeah don't let anything hold you back. There's so many people that'll either message me or write on our socials like, oh, I can't, oh, I can't. And it's like, but you never know until you try. Um, so go for it. You have nothing to lose. We've had people that have, that have said that over and over again, and then they finally did it. And it was like the best thing ever for them. You know what I mean? And, and they're like, like, why didn't I do this sooner? Yeah, they were like, oh, I could have had three more years of this. You know, it's like, you never know. Don't, don't, don't be in your own way. You know what I mean? Like do the thing. And then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll work with you to try and figure out, you know, the rest of the stuff. Um, and, and also don't be intimidated either. Well. Yeah, we can't, mm -hmm. we can't help you if we, if you're not on our radar, you know, we can't help you if you don't audition. I think also some people say it's, if it's not money or distance based, uh, you know, like uh, sometimes it's convincing uh, parents why it's worth it, which there are lots of reasons why it's worth it. I promise you it's so much more than just a summer program, but also there's like an inferiority thing like, oh, like these people are so amazing. I'm not that good, but like, you know what? Everyone's different. Everyone is unique. Everyone has something special and, you know, and we love seeing these individual unique people. So there's only one you and we want to see it. Mm -hmm. There are so many of our campers that felt like that. And often when they get to camp, they still feel like that. They're like, how am I here? Everyone's so amazing. I'm the worst, you know? <laughs> Un unfortunately, it's like, it's like a common thing. Um, but yeah, you just have to get outside of yourself and be like, maybe myself telling me that I'm not good, it's not true. <laughs> maybe, my, maybe I'm lying to myself. So yeah, just I would encourage everyone to just get beyond that and just go for it. Um, cool. So we're having a holiday Zoomathon, which is going to be really fun. We have a bunch of campers, alumni, staff putting on a little Zoom show um, to help support Acapella Academy. Um, we had a rough year last year with digital, and we need to make sure that we are able to keep going monetarily. Um, so that would really help us out if you come. And it's great, fun Christmas music. And you have to kind of be a part of our little world for a bit. Um, yeah. And then acapellacademy.org is where you'll, where you'll find all the information about our sessions this summer, about our scholarship funds, about everything you need to know is there. And if it's not, you can email Beth at acapellacademy with two A's at gmail.com. Should we do questions? I think there's a lot of questions. Let's do questions. Yeah, I've been I've been collecting them. I tried to organize them in sort of like the order that you would think through your audition. There's a lot of them. Do you want me to just go for you guys? Yeah. Okay. Um. So first off, uh, will this slideshow and or our Zoom recording of this be available to people afterwards? Yeah. That's a question. It. Yeah, we'll figure it out and we we will make it known. So if you're not already following us. 
I think it'll be at least unlisted so you can like ask us for a link and we'll send it to you. Yeah. This this yeah. video will be available somewhere for sure. Somewhere. If you don't if we aren't making it publicly available, you can always just email. Um we'll we'll figure out some way to make it available to y'all. Um, a couple like uh, kind of international questions. Um, is, is it a big problem if you live in another country and don't speak English well? Which I would say, I mean, obviously, um, it's like if you come, there's English and so you'll get a lot of practice. And so it can be definitely draining um, if you like haven't been around it a lot, but you'll learn a lot and you'll, you'll be in a supportive environment. Yeah, we've, um, we've, yeah, had, no, we've, we've, we've definitely had who... students that had, do not know much English. Um, and, you know, you kind of have conversations with uh, sign language and, you know, but music is the universal language. So, but no, really, we've had students come that really cannot speak much English at all. Um, and they have an amazing time. So don't let that hold you back. And I think uh, if you end up doing digital, it's, it'll be a lot easier. You can translate things all the time and you're mm -hmm. not put on the spot as much. You're just kind of participating. Um, so that's a good way to do it as well. Definitely a challenge, but not an insurmountable one. If there's a will, there's a way. It's like a big theme. Um, and then someone was asking about if there's separate auditions for digital and in-person, it's not. So it's one audition and you just tell us when you fill out your application, like which, if you want audition for one, the other, or both. And then once yeah. we figure out what is happening this summer, then we'll reach out and you'll get to solidify. If, if, you're, if we ad ad admit you, then we're like, okay, this is happening, which, or which one you want to do. And then that'll all happen after the audition process. Um, yeah, and that, that answers another question too about someone saying, do you have to choose, like, tell us what you're interested in on the application. But like Ben said, like, we will give you the opportunity to change your mind or to like make a decision after we accept you. Um, moving on to the audition, what is the best technical setup for the part singing so that the recording being played doesn't sound so harsh compared to your voice? Mm. That's a good question. Um, I think it can be any little speaker, you know, laptop speaker works fine. Um, as long as we can hear your voice clearly and we can hear the other parts a little bit, it's it's fine. It's not a, not a big deal. Um, so even just any kind of little speaker in the background, but I would say test it out uh, and make sure the level is good. We do want to be able to hear your voice most of all. So just make sure that it's not being buried beneath the other sound. Anything else on that one? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, solo singing questions. Um, and so I'm gonna fire through like all of them and I Let's kind of know it. the answer to these, but let, blah, 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 here we go. Uh, are there any ones that are overdone? Um, do you have advice for people that have trained mainly in classical? Would opera be a miscellaneous skill? Um, we get this question a lot about like, we just do you answer really mean no? <laughs> one at a time. Oh yeah, yeah. Lightning, lightning round, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Too many. The first one was, are there any songs that are overdone? No. Yes, but don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, just do what you want to do. Just do what you want to do. Uh, if you, do you have advice for singers who have mainly trained in a classical setting slash is opera allowed for miscellaneous skill? Uh, I yes, would say just show that you can, you know, make sure that, you know, it's not always going to be huge, loud vibrato. Um, so that you would be able to blend in a poppy setting. You don't have to necessarily be able to riff or do anything crazy. Um, but, you know, just show that you can dial it down. And, and you yes, it is. It's a good miscellaneous skill. Definitely. Uh, we get questions about musical theater a lot. People always want to sing as musical theater. And so we, do you really mean no musical theater? No, but really? <laughs> no Broadway? You'll be Disney? swell. You'll be great. <laughs> Hey, listen, if it's, I mean, if it's, if you have a, a favorite song from Dear Evan Hansen or something that's poppy, that feels poppy, I'm, we're not going to say no, you know, just like we do, we need to know that you can sing the styles that we perform. So if you're confident that the musical theater song you're going to sing shows us the styles that we perform at camp, absolutely go for it. I'm, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I actually, I, I think it's more about the presentation than the song choice, even because it's like, I think what we really react negatively to is when somebody like does something very theatrically, you know, does something in a very like musical theatery style and it's not really appropriate for like a pop group. Um, so you could sing a musical theater song in a pop, you know, with a more pop aesthetic or pop delivery, that would be totally fine. It's not really about the song, it's about how you do it. Totally. And knowing what you're auditioning for because this isn't a Broadway musical, you know, and so just understanding Not that. yet. 
Acapella Academy the Musical. Nice. Also, we like generally don't perform musical theater songs at camp. So we also want to know that you like, like pop music a little bit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And someone wants to know if we could do, if they said, could we do seasonal songs? Sure. <laughs> like Christmas songs? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if there are songs we feel comfortable singing, but they were written by the staff, should we avoid it? No. No, go no. for it. Do it. Not at all. We'll probably send On the it. Web yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably send it to the person that wrote it. <laughs> I'm going to summarize this question. Um, basically someone was saying on the website, it seemed like part singing was the most important, but today it seemed like maybe solo was. So is there a, a singular thing that's the most important part of the audition, would you say? I think the point of us saying that on the website is that a lot of people in the past have overlooked part singing and not really done their best on it. Um, so the point of that is to make sure that you really put time and energy into part singing, because if you make a mistake in part singing, you probably won't get in. So that's that's kind of what it comes down to because the part singing is so specific and it's most of what we'll be doing at camp. Um, so just do a good job on it. Obviously solo is important as well. Um, but if someone has like a mediocre solo and really, really good part singing, they'll probably get in. Exactly. You, you can, you can make up, you can save yourself a lot more with part singing than you can with a solo. That's like, if you, if you really nail your part singing, then we're looking at you as, being able to offer a lot more to a group than you might as a soloist and it gives you a lot more options. It gives us a lot more reasons that we might be able to accept you. This was answered in the chat, but just to clarify with, with your solos, you are only singing part of the song. You're not singing the whole song. So like a verse and a chorus kind of. Please, yeah. please only sing part of the song. We don't have that much time. <laughs> okay, moving on to rhythm section. Uh, if you have an audition that is a great bass but also does beatboxing, do you tend to put them in a bass position where they are already solid or do you put them in an area to grow from not knowing much? It just depends on what we need, honestly, I feel like. And generally speaking, we're, we're making our group decisions based on what's going to be best for the group, not what's going to be the best you know, educational experience for that person. Because we want our groups to be awesome and we want everyone in the group to have a really great time. And that happens when everyone is really on their game. So mm -hmm. pick whatever they're best at, most likely, unless there's a change in, like Avi said, what's happening that year. But yeah, pretty much we'll choose yeah. what you're best at. If you can do VP even a little bit, should one add it as a secondary skill or would it take away from the audition as a whole? It would not take away. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I would, say, I would say put it in. Yeah. And we've had people that didn't even, it, it seemed like VP was sort of like not their focus and we ended up taking them as VP, so you never mm -hmm. know. Um, can you do more than one miscellaneous skill? Is there a place to put your own arrangements in the audition? Yes, mm -hmm. show us what you got. Yes and yes, that's, that's where <laughs> like miscellaneous skills where you can put all the other stuff that you do, any original songs, any arrangements, whatever, whatever you want can go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I got a private question that's hilarious. Okay, um, any tips for scales? It wasn't mentioned. So, yeah, I saw that question. So scales, scales are not such a huge factor in whether or not we accept you now. It used to be before we had the blending stuff, the, the part singing in the audition, because that was really how we assessed your tone and assessed whether you were, you know, how your pitch was. Now we have the blending exercises and stuff that we listen to for that. So the, that stuff is really used more now to create the groups. Um, so it's not, I mean, you should do it well for sure. Um, but that's not really what we're looking at to like make a, you get in or you don't get in decision. Um, I guess the only time it would become a factor is if like, we're trying to figure out like, oh, we need like an especially high soprano for something, or we need like an especially low alto for a group or something. But I don't really think that that's like, I wouldn't stress out so much about, you know, exactly how you do your scales as long as they demonstrate your range appropriately. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, everyone. I have to go. I love you all so much. Thank you for coming. Um, and we'll see you soon, hopefully, whether it be vir virtually or in person. Definitely audition. And um, yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye, Avi. Bye, Bye, Bye everybody. And we'll, we'll hang out and answer remaining questions. Um, someone wants to know about scholarship. So uh, someone want to take that? 
Uh, what specifically about scholarship? <laughs> it just says, please tell us about scholarships. Uh, <laughs> we have scholarships. Yeah, you want to do it? Me? Yeah. yeah. We have scholarships. We have partial scholarships, full scholarships, travel stipends. Um, now, please know that we can't, we are not funded to just give everybody full rides. We wish we could, but we will find a way. It's need-based, it's not talent-based because everybody who gets in is excessively talented. But um, you submit an app, after people are accepted, you submit an application if you want scholarship. And then we work together. So we're raising money for you, but then you're also raising money on your own. You'd be surprised how many times people didn't even know communities would rally around them. And they're able to crowdfund and they don't even need scholarship from us, which is great because then we can give what we raise to people who maybe aren't in a network that could help them as much. Um, but scholarships are there. Like, th if there's a will, there's a way. We got this. Yeah, and I would say, you know, again, going back to the thing, don't worry about. It's great to know those de details now, but don't worry about. Oh, how am I going to pay for it? How is this going to happen? You know, because an aud audition is a no. You know, the only thing you're putting in is your time, which will benefit you as well by doing this educational thing. Um, so don't worry about how am I going to raise it? How is it going to happen? All that will happen after you get in and then we work together and do a bunch of stuff to raise money. That's right. Um, and then after that, it's just kind of like a lot of like sort of like curiosity around sort of the nitpicky stuff about like how many people audition, these kinds of things. Um, do you want me to fire into those as well? Sure. Okay. Um, could you give an example of how what you look for changes every year? Um, I guess it really depends on, it, it depends on the pool of people auditioning um, and it depends on the instructors that we have and the, the types of music that they're passionate about. Um, I don't know if I can give like a really specific example, but I, I mean, mean I, I think you, you mentioned it before, you know, there, there's a folk country group and right. I think we ended up taking maybe a person that year who we may not have accepted otherwise if there wasn't a country group for them to be a perfect fit in. Right. We, and we've had people like, uh, you know, we've had people who like can really specifically like sing like soprano jazz stuff really well that if we didn't have a group that needed a soprano jazz person, they might not have made it, but we did and they did. Um, do referrals give you an advantage or disadvantage of getting in or not getting in? Uh, we don't really have an official referral process. There, uh, there, there's no effect. It's it's yeah. for us to grow our, you know, user base and and get and reach more people. So that's the point of it, the yeah. referrals. That that was the thing we did. Oh, last that year. kind of. I thought I thought they meant like um like somebody reaching out to us and being like, oh, I want to recommend so and so for camp. Oh, like, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. I, I'm pretty sure they're talking about where our alumni base would reach out to. Oh, them. okay. And if they we just give them a little kickback of the application fee um, for bringing a new person to us. Um, but it doesn't affect your chances as an applicant at all. And honestly, it just helps us know how people are finding out about us so that we can invest in making sure people hear about us in the ways that are actually effective. Um, around how many people audition, how many people are admitted, has anyone gotten in one year, but then not the next? You or me, Ben? Um, I'll take the first part. You take the last Go. part. <laughs> um, so how many people? So it changes year to year. Um, I think what happened at the very beginning was, you know, Pentatonix advertised it. We got a huge rush of people auditioning the first year. And then every year it's like slowly uh, de declined as far as the number of people auditioning. However, the number of people, of talented people that we are accepting is slowly going up. So as the actual overall number of applications goes down, the talent pool goes up, which leads me leads leads us to believe that people are auditioning. That a lot more people are are self selecting, are saying, "Oh, maybe I'm not good enough to do it." Um, so that's why the overall numbers are going down, but the talent is still there and going up. Um, and so you know, it's in the you know 500 ish per year, um, and then as far as how many we accept. I think our first year was 65 and we've slowly gone up and up and up and up. And this year we accepted. Oh, right. The first year was only 65. But yeah, pretty sure. Wow. That seems so small now. <laughs> I know. So it went from 65 to 85. So, you know, we're trying to build yeah. uh, into a bigger program. And especially this year, I'm excited to see what happens with our, our digital um, 
it gives the the potential to maybe admit more people. We don't know. Yeah, we're really the biggest limitation, honestly, uh, for the reason why eighty five ish is is the cap is its space on campus. Um, yeah, and, on, and on the risers. On and the uh, yes, I mean it's it's rooms on campus and it's space on the risers. Um, we only have so much room on that stage at Mount St. Mary's. So and we really like Mount St. Mary's, so we don't want to move anywhere bigger. Right. But we, you know, we have talked about, um, you know, doing more sessions. I think like one of our, what the lo longer term goal for Academy is to have potentially an East Coast and a West Coast international. We've talked about, we're still a ways away from that potentially, but could happen. We need more people. We need more talent, more people to audition. If there's demand, we'll do it. Uh, there was another, what was my part of that? What was the last? Um, is anyone who gets in one year and not the next? Yeah. doesn't happen a lot, but it can happen. Um, and it's again, it's it's it comes down to you know talent pool every year, um, and sometimes people just you know for whatever reason they don't have as good an audition the following year, and there's more people that have their skill set that auditioned that the year you know, the the following year, um, so it can happen. Also, um, it's also like how camp went too. There are sometimes mm -hmm. when we admit someone and it just doesn't end up being a good fit um, in their group. Um, and so, yeah, th there are a lot of reasons why that happens, but it does happen now and then. Mm -hmm. But there are, you know, those people are always part of the family and we always love, you know, encourage them to come to events and um, keep in touch. And they are, they're very much still a part of the community. Um, is getting in as a treble voice more competitive? Yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hundred yes, percent. It yeah. is. <laughs> um, that is just the sad fact of the interest. Uh, I wish we had more tenors and baritones who would audition. Well, it's also you know like you know lower voices voices change and it's you know it's harder. You know we all I went through it too. Like it's harder to sing when you're 13 year old and your voice just changed than when if your voice doesn't change. Um, so it's yeah. It's, I mean there are there are so many great sopranos and, and altos. Um, every year it's just that it's just yeah and we have to we have to cut more than we'd like because of just the numbers of camp and the balance of any particular group we have to make sure there are lower and upper voices um so that's that is the reality but we we have in recent you know i think over the years we've started to do more treble voice groups to try and yeah open up more opportunity for that um but yeah definitely harder <laughs> Uh, what proportion of people uh, have done, like are returning campers? I don't know that offhand. Do you know that, Beth? Honestly, it depends because sometimes campers come back and sometimes they don't, you know? Um, okay. But yeah, campers are always welcome to re-audition. And- I feel like of, of any given year, I would say it's maybe about half returning. I would say, I would say less actually. I, I was just thinking about that. I think it's like, I think it's more like 30 to 40% returning it probably depends on the year too yeah it depends on the year it's less i think it's less than half i think it's usually i think we usually have between 30 somewhere in the 30 to 40 ish people yeah returning we have some age questions um for example uh do we weigh it more to accept somebody if they're a senior and it's their last chance good question um I mean, I think if you're older, you're generally more experienced. And so your the talent level is is going to maybe be there regardless. We're not really thinking. I mean, I, I we have said that before. We're definitely uh, not thinking. We're definitely not. We've, I don't think we've ever not taken someone because we were like, oh, they could only come for one year. I think I saw that question asked. That's never happened. We've never been like, oh, they're only going to get one year. Like we're not going to be able to bring them back later. So. Oh no! Yeah, it, it, I think it only works. No, no. no. That I think it's awesome. just if, if it's a dead tie and there's only room for like one more person. If this person's 15 and this person's 18, it's like okay, well, this is their last chance, so we'll take them. I think that's happened. Usually, uh, I mean, I feel like usually in that scenario we take both people. Actually, I think it's <laughs> it's really usually we'll extend for people that are in that scenario true. more than more than choose one or the other. Right. I mean, um, and then as, as we've raised our number every year, we're, you know, we are always trying to take more people. We're not trying to restrict it. Yeah. Um, people asking about like technically 18 or 19 college or no college. So basically if, if you are still 18 and you aren't 
like some people are young and have done college or university, but typically if you're 18 and it's been, you've just graduated high school and you haven't started as a freshman in university yet, you're welcome to come. Once you're a freshman in university and you're that kind of 18 year old, then technically that's where the line is. Um, so it's a gray line, but. Yeah, if you're currently in a college university situation, um, then you're not eligible. I mean, unless you're like 16 and you did running start or something, but yeah. Right. If, if you're 18, yeah, if you're 18. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, if the, you know, there's gap year situations and all that stuff. And just email us if there's any kind of specific situation like that. Um, it is tricky to figure out. There's so many situations. So it's kind of a, a case by case with stuff like that. So, um, but yeah. We've had, okay, I had, oh, sorry. I was going to say quickly, we, we ha we've had people that I think like, was their senior year of high school and turned 19, like, you know, June 28th or what, you know, it was like, they, or, they, or they turned like 19 at camp, you know? And yeah. what we're really trying to do with that is, you know, the, just the college experience is so different from, from high school. Once you've gone to college, there's just like a change that happens socially um, that we feel that everyone who's still in, in high school can really like vibe with everyone. And then college is like another step. So that's kind of why we choose to do that. You can't go back to Narnia after you go to college, sorry. Plus acapella, so there's so many opportunities for college students, um, so that's another thing. Um, some more musical questions came in. Um, 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 do we need to sing parts from songs exclusively acapella or can we have accompaniment? Uh, we like it to be acapella for your solo. Oh, for, for solos, yeah. Yeah, acapella please. Is it okay if you aren't in an acapella group at school? Absolutely. In fact, strongly encouraged, I would say. If this is your, if you really love acapella and you don't have an opportunity to do it in your, your normal life, we would love to have you come do it at camp. So many of our campers didn't, weren't in a group. Um, they, some, a lot of them haven't even done choir. So there are a lot of people that are just naturally good singers and are able to pick it up. Um, how much does uh, sight reading or being able to read music affect your chances of getting in? Doesn't um, really actually. I mean, yeah, doesn't, doesn't really. If you can perform the parts well, um, that's all we need to see. You know, like if you can do that, then we trust that you can do what we have to do there. <laughs> yeah, because we a lot of the times the the parts are learned via audio learning tracks. In fact, I think exclusively now that's how it happens. So we yeah, as long as you're able to learn it some way, um, we're happy to have you. For the audition and when you get in, you get sheet music and you get demos for everything. So you can learn through sight, through sound, pick and choose both. So if you can learn from sound, but you don't read music, that's fine. Um, if you can sing both alto and soprano comfortably, which should you do or should you do both? Uh, I, would, I, would, I would really suggest picking one that you're better at, that your voice really resonates the best in that range. Um, you can do both. You really don't need to. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's I mean, the thing the, the thing is also like, especially especially at the at the age that we're talking about, like people's voices are still in flux. So it's not like most people are not really like a traditional alto or a traditional soprano. Some people really do hit the end of the spectrum, but almost everybody's like almost all lower voices are some kind of baritone, and most almost all upper voices are some kind of mezzo soprano in some capacity. So I, yeah, I would say kind of lean towards whatever you're more comfortable with. Um, in, the, in the singing world, there's so much needing to classify your, yourself and identify yourself, but yeah, we more. really don't super care. So I feel like you guys care a lot more about this than we do because we'll hear your voice. And so then we'll know. I think um, I would say sing both parts and whichever one is more fun for you, do that one. And like maybe on different songs, a different part feels different and that's fine. Um, I think that's the base. I mean, there's like little bits and pieces, but we're right at the two hour mark. So I think this is a good place to stop because we're getting into the weeds as it is. Great. Okay. Um, this was fun. This was great. Yeah, thank you all for being here. I want to just, uh, I haven't seen everyone because I've been on full screen. The remaining 65. Uh, you guys made it through all the questions. Yay, you did it. You win the prize. Question people. <laughs>
Thank you all so much and um, have a have a great Sunday. And be sure to audition and get everyone you know to audition. Oh, and our um, our Zoom-a-thon is December 13th if you want to save the date. Follow us on all the social platforms. We'll keep you updated and we hope to see you there. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone. Awesome. Thanks, y'all. Take meeting. care. Bye.